Hello and welcome to this POP training module, an introduction to PyPOP. My name is Phil Tooley, I'm an HPC application analyst at NAG, one of the POP partners, and I'm the primary author of the PyPOP tool. So what is PyPOP? Previous training modules have introduced the uh, X-Tray tool and its Paravar GUI and the Scalaska tool and its Cube GUI. And we've seen that the Parava and Cube GUIs are extremely powerful tools that provide huge amounts of detailed information about the trace. In contrast, PyPOP is designed to be a much simpler tool that automates the common and repetitive tasks in performance profiling. In particular, it's designed to allow rapid analysis of traces and quickly computing the POP metrics. From here, we can generate high quality plots and reports based on those metrics, and it's designed to um, provide a user-friendly and tool agnostic interface for doing this. It's also built on top of a back-end framework that allows advanced users to build custom analyses in Python if they wish to. But I'd like to make it clear that um, PyPOP is only one part of the performance analysis workflow, and it's not a substitute for manually inspecting the traces in greater detail using the Paravar or Cube GUIs. And be aware that it's also still under quite heavy development. So when you come to use PyPOP, although the features that I'm going to demonstrate today will be, will be there and are mature features, PyPOP may look a little bit different as we continue to work on it and refine the interface. So I'll just quickly describe the uh, design choices and philosophy behind PyPOP. It's written in Python 3 using the NumPy and Pandas libraries for um, statistics and the Bokeh library for plotting. And this is a widely used combination in science and industry and it's designed to minimize the barrier to entry for anyone uh, coming from an academic or an industrial background who might like to use PyPOP. And also it's designed using a plug-in based architecture so that uh, it should be easy for anyone who wants to extend PyPOP to support a new analysis type or to support a new profiling tool to do so. The interface to PyPOP is, uh, makes use of the Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, this is designed to encourage a literate programming approach which mixes uh, the code and uh, descriptive text for uh, the analysis together in a single notebook. And from this, with everything in a single notebook, it makes it easier for us to be able to support the generation of PDF reports directly from an analysis notebook. And finally, uh, PyPOP incorporates a wizard GUI for uh, non-Python programmers to uh, allow anyone to quickly generate pop metrics and to generate reports without actually having to write any Python code at all. So the remainder of this presentation is going to be a demonstration of a typical PyPOP workflow. And in this case, it's going to be calculating the POP metrics from an X-tray trace or a set of X-tray traces. And so the first step here would be to collect the actual traces with X-tray. Now, using X-tray to collect traces is covered in detail in the previous POP training module on X-tray. So all I'm going to cover here is the information that the trace will need to contain. So if you're analysing an MPI code, you'll need to have made sure to collect the MPI events with X-Tray. If, similarly, if you're analysing an OpenMP code, you need to have collected the OpenMP events. And for any code, you will have needed to collect the total instructions and the total in cycles of hardware counters. So the next step is an optional one, but it's one that I highly recommend, and that is to pre-process the traces. So one of the common challenges in performance profiling is that the traces that are collected by the profiling tools are extremely large. They can be many, many gigabytes. While actually the, the, the data that we actually need to calculate the pop metrics is just a very small number of statistical measures, such as the total time spent in MPI or the total time spent in OpenMP um, the, and the total runtime of the code. And so um, we can really speed up the uh, loading and the interaction with the uh, with the Jupyter notebook by pre-processing these large traces to collect this small amount of data. This is particularly useful if you are running on uh, a remote machine such as an HPC or a cloud machine where you have no graphical uh, access to the machine, you only have uh, console access to the machine. Um, because the pre-processing can be run from the console, it's a command line application and then you can download just the small summary files that are a few kilobytes and then quickly load those into the notebook rather than having to wait for the multi-gigabyte files to download from the cloud or from the HPC and then process them locally. 
So to demonstrate this, uh, I've collected these uh, trace files using Xtray, and I've done a, a strong scaling scan using uh, powers of two node numbers from one node to 32 nodes. And so I have my uh, .prv trace files here for Xtray, and I also have these pipop summary files. So I have these because I've already actually run the uh, the preprocessing. The preprocessing for these files takes about two hours. Um, and because I've already pre-processed them, PyPop will now use these uh, summary files every time I try and do something else. But in general, to, to pre-process, you would use the PyPop pre-process tool. And because I want to process them all, I just use a star dot PRV to process all of the PRV files. And I hit enter. And that completes very, very quickly because in this case, I've already run the pre-processing and so PyPop sees that there's a summary file for each one and, and that's it, it's done, it doesn't do anything else. But uh, the real advantage of this is that it can be run, because it's a command line tool, it can be run as a batch job, it can be run in the background um, and it just uh, it can run overnight, for example. And so you can, you can set it running and it will take maybe several hours to do the analysis, but you can go away and do something else and come back once it's done and then download these few small PyPop summary files and load them into the PyPop GUI and away you go. So the next step then once we've done this pre-processing or even if you haven't done the pre-processing is to open the Jupyter Notebook with the wizard GUI. So to launch the PyPop wizard we need to use the pypop-gui command and what this is going to do is it's going to create a small IPython notebook file um, and that file is going to contain the code that's needed to actually launch the wizard and create the wizard um, that, we, that we want to use. And then it's going to start a copy of the IPython server and that will load the notebook and it will try and open that for us automatically in a browser window. And if it can't do that, it will give us um, a URL that we can copy and we can paste into the browser bar and we can navigate to it that way. So once we type PyPop GUI and I hit enter, it uh, takes a few moments to actually start up the uh, the notebook server and then um, it's opened that automatically for me in in uh, my in my Firefox so it's a very short little snippet of code and all this is going to do when we run it is to um, create the uh, create a copy of the GUI that we can use so uh, first of all I just need to tell Py um, IPython that I actually do trust this notebook because otherwise it won't let us uh, use the JavaScript that um, makes the GUI interactive. And once I've done that, I hit I, um, I can just hit run. Or if you're a, more of a keyboard person, you can type shift enter. And that will run the cell and that's created our little GUI window for us. So now what we need to do is to load our trace files. So if I hit select, um, it's given me a list here. And because I launched it in the... Uh, in the directory that has all our trace files, they're already right here. And I have the PRV files, and I also have the PyPop summary files. And I can load either, it doesn't matter, because um, if you load a normal trace file, like an Xtray PRV file, PyPop will automatically check to see if a summary file already exists. And if it does, it will use that. So I can just select my one node, and now I just add more files. I'm going to need six in total. And I'll select my two node and my four node and sorry my four node and so on. Although actually there is no there's no particular need to uh, load select the files and load them in order. PyPop will try and automatically work out an appropriate order of um, increasing uh, increasing number of processors. Uh, based on the information in the files rather than relying on uh, anything in the file name itself. So now I've selected all the uh, all the files I want to load. I tell PyPop that I'd like plain MPI metrics, please, because this is a, just a, a plain MPI code. And then I can hit, hit Analyze. And because we've already produced those um, PyPop summary files, uh, the analysis is extremely quick. If I hadn't produced those PyPop summary files, it would now have been showing me a, pro a progress bar and I would have to come back in about two hours for it to have finished doing all the analysis on the fly. But um, I have it, I've done the pre-processing, it's generated me a metrics table. And so this is my metrics table and it's created a nicely formatted table with all the standard pop metrics in it. 
And if I want to save this for later just as an image, I can hit the little save icon here and it'll let me download an image. I'm, to be honest, not worried, so I'll just cancel that. And similarly, um, it's produced me a scaling plot. Again, I can save it. And the, the important thing that I'm going to be doing here is just now I can quickly do a little sanity check. So I go back to my metrics table. Are these the metrics that I expect to see? Do they make sense? Now in this case, I've analyzed this application before and I know that um, these particular metrics are very, very representative of the kind of performance that you would expect to get from this application and the particular uh, configuration and the job that it was that it was running. And similarly, I can go to my scaling plot and I can see that um, at 32 nodes here at the top, I get about 20 times speed up, which, as I say, is is roughly what you'd expect. So I'm, I'm happy with that now. And I'm happy that um, the trace files I've gathered and the analysis that I'm running with PyPop is doing what I expect. It's giving me the right answers. And so the next step then is I want to move on to report generation. And this is, um, this is I think, the, the most important and the most useful feature of PyPop is that we can now generate an entire report directly with PyPop. So the first step here is going to be uh, generate a report notebook from the wizard GUI. Um, and this will be a second notebook which contains um, the, uh, the plots that we've just generated with the wizard and the code that's needed to uh, generate those, but now fixed with the, in the specific input files that we chose. We can then add description and discussion text to the notebook um, we can customize the analysis using additional Python code if we want to. And then finally, we'll be able to convert that notebook to a PDF to create a shareable copy of the report. So to generate this report notebook, I'm going to the report generation tab. And the first thing I need to do is type an application name. So it's a test code. And I need to give a name of the report author, which is me and the names of any contributors that uh, helped me with the report and internally in pop and internally in pop um, we would usually give the report an ID but for now I'll just leave that as just leave that as demo and we hit generate and it's now created an extra um, IPython notebook file containing our report now, unfortunately, um, it's a security limitation within um, the IPython notebook that I can't launch another notebook directly. So instead, now I have to go to File and Open. And here is my generated report in the list. And I just open that up. So what I have now is um, a new notebook file that contains a uh, all of the code, all of the Python code that's needed to um, to generate the generate the plots. So uh, first of all, it imports the relevant things from PyPop. Uh, this is where it uh, actually loads the trace files and the summary files, computes the uh, the metrics that we ask for, the standard MPI metrics. Um, it will then generate a scaling plot and it will generate a metric table. So as with the previous notebook, I need to run this now. So first of all, just quickly trust it so that the JavaScript works. And I go to sell and run all. And now it's it's very quickly done that and it's produced me the same scaling plot and the same metrics. And so the next thing I'd want to do now if I was wanting to generate a complete report is I would need to actually write the text of my report. So for now, I'm just going to quickly paste in some useful text that I already had on the clipboard. So, and then um, to uh, to edit a cell, you double click into the cell and that puts it that puts it into edit mode. And this is a this is a markdown cell. So it um, it'll take standard text and um, some simple uh, markdown syntax to allow you to uh, use emphasis or highlights or to insert latex style uh, mathematical uh, expressions if you would like to. And then to uh, get out of the cell and to, to re-render it as text, you can just press Shift Enter. And so similarly, I give some discussion of my scaling results. And um, give some discussion of the metrics. And perhaps in my discussion of the metrics, um, I want to really highlight a point. So I can use the markdown 
I can use the markdown syntax to um, to make a really important point here and those uh, asterisks as before and after tell markdown to put it in italics and I finally put in some conclusions and there we have um, without having to write any Python code at all we've produced a full report with um, the uh, the plots and all of the descriptive text in a single document and so this is now a, a standalone version of the report where everything is contained together and this is this is the idea of literate programming is rather than having a separate document that has just the text of the report and, and a script somewhere else that produces the figures everything is done here in a single document so now the final step in this workflow is going to be to create a PDF version of the report now, um, the most important thing to do here before anything else is to save the save the notebook. Um, IPython regularly makes checkpoints and auto saves the notebook, but uh, just to make sure we're definitely up to date, we'll manually hit the save button and make sure we've we've saved the most up to date version of the notebook with all our text. And from here now, we can uh, go back to the uh, go back to the console window, and you could open a new console window, or I'm just going to use this current one, um, and you can leave IPython the IPython server running or you can shut it down so I'm going to shut it down and just by pressing control C and now in the background uh, you can see that the uh, the notebook window is complaining that it's lost connection to the server but that's fine because we have our report notebook saved and so the last thing we need to do now is to use this uh, another script this one is called pipop nb to pdf and we give it the name of the report just in this case it's just report ipnb we hit enter and off it goes and it's now going to run the notebook in the background um, to collect the images out of it it's going to collect the text that we've put out that we've typed in out of it um, and it's going to discard the actual code and so what it will now do is it will render just the images and the descriptive text that we had into a PDF report and it will then uh, write that out to a PDF along with uh, some pop specific templating and so now we can open this up with uh, whatever your PDF reader of choice happens to be and I'll just skip around to make the PDF report full screen and there we go we have a, a nicely formatted report and that metadata that we put in when we generated the report so the the name of the code the reference number uh, the author name and the uh, the uh, names of the contributors are there on the front matter and then if we go to the next page here we have our introductory paragraph uh, the information application information scaling efficiency metrics um, and here are our figures now, of course, for a real report, uh, you would take a little bit more time to uh, make sure that you've given captions to the figures and so on. But this gives a, a flavor of the uh, power that uh, using the um, literate programming approach with Pyropop can give for uh, quickly generating report directly from uh, the IPython notebook where you're uh, doing the analysis. So that brings this uh, training module to a close. And in conclusion, PyPop is a tool for efficient performance analysis workflows using Python with the IPython and Jupyter Notebook interface. It allows us to quickly analyze traces and compute the pop metrics, uh, to plot metric tables and scaling graphs, and to output uh, fully annotated and templated PDF reports. And if you're interested in checking out PyPop for yourself, it's available on GitHub at github.com slash numerical algorithms group slash PyPop. So that concludes this training module. Uh, please do check out the other training modules that we have on the POP website. Um, and you can also uh, follow us on Twitter and find our training modules and our webinars on YouTube at youtube.com slash pophpc.